Okay, so let's start our discussion. So this is about the electrolyte effects now. So last time um, we were able to cover a brief idea about the uh, common ion effect. So what common ion effect, ion effect is all about is kapag meron ka daw ions that are common to your equilibrium system, that means the system will be shifted to the left. No? Okay, so kunwari, you have this ion, uh, this ion, no? kunwari, meron kang ganitong solution, KCl, K plus, then Cl minus. If you add more K plus, then the reaction will be shifted to the left. Marireform yung inyong reactants, no? Just for this example. So, yun yung common ion effect. Sa topic natin na to, we will discover the counterpart of that idea. No? Pag titignan natin yung kabaliktaran ng common ion effect. No? And that is called the electrolyte effect. So this is our chapter outline. So we will cover all the topics until here. Ito yung asynchronous natin. So yung asynchronous will be done next week. Mag-upload na lang ako ng video for you to watch. No? Uh, I will send the link here sa chat box natin. Okay. So for our, for today, we will discuss the hydrate, hydrated ions and equilibrium, the ionic strength, ionic activity, the activity coefficient, the properties of the activity coefficient, and how to calculate the activity coefficient using, using the D by UKEL equation. Okay. So yeah, so let's start now. So what happens when you dissolve your salt in the in your water? No? Ano nangyayari kapag yung salt mo nilagay mo sa tubig? What we know about sa ions, no? pwede silang mag-interact with dipole molecules sa solvent natin. Water is a dipole molecule and we have ions. So ibig sabihin, their charges may interact. No? And as they interact, they form what's called the hydration sphere. Okay? So the sphere of hydration that is a region or ionic atmosphere that is a region in space where water molecules will get attached to your ions. So suppose maglagay ako ng ions dito. Let's say we have calcium ion. Then I have sulfate ion. Ang mangyayari, di ba, pag nag-split sila into ions, magkakaroon niya ng hydration sphere na. So, the hydration sphere will be composed of yung for calcium, ang kakabit sa kanya yung partial negative charge sa oxygen okay, ng water. So, tututok sa kanya yung ano, oxygen side ng water. So, ayan. So, nakakabit sa kanya yung oxygen side ng water. So, itong region occupied by the water molecules, we call this the ionic atmosphere or the hydration sphere. No? So, andyan yung mga tubig-tubig natin. And then for sulfate, since this is negatively charged, it will be attracted to, to ano? Yan ay ma-attract sa partial positive end ng water, which is yung hydrogen. So, makakagawa sila ng uh, hydration sphere din. So, ayan. Okay. And this interaction is possible due to the presence of ion-dipole interactions. Diba? Nasa discussion natin yan last time sa London Dispersion Forces. No? Uh, Ay, hindi pala sa intermolecular forces rather no, noong last semester. So sabi natin doon that ions are attracted to dipoles because they both contain charges. No? Kaya ma-attract sila. So what happens when we add salts in our solution ng water is that they form the dehydration sphere or the ionic atmosphere. So the smaller your charge ions, the more water molecules will bind them. And then also, the greater your charge, the greater the ionic atmosphere. Na. So yun lang yung idea dito. But what happens na 
kunwari, precipitation reaction to. Ano nangyayari sa ionic atmosphere? No? So, kunwari, we have water and then we have the sulfate ion. If they come together, their interaction will be stronger than their interaction with water. Yung ion-ion interaction, that will be stronger than the ion-dipole interaction. So, that's why na possible yung precipitation reaction. Mas malakas yung attraction nila sa isa't isa compared sa hydration. Kaya namumuo uli sila. Okay. So, yun yung, ano, yun yung reason bakit may precipitation reaction tayo. If there is enough energy to combine them together para maging solid sila, then precipitation reaction will occur. Okay? So, yan. However, uh, ito, introduction pa lang to, no? Punta tayo sa, ano, observation. So, sabi natin last time in chapter 3 that we can tell no, yung shift ng equilibrium by just looking at the species in your equilibrium equation. Suppose you add iron, that will shift the equilibrium to the right. If you add these ions, that will shift the equilibrium to the left. Okay. So, ang requirement natin last time for the reaction to be shifted is that dapat you have common ions. Kaya nga may common ion effect tayo as also prescribed by Le Chatelier principle. Okay. However, look at this observation. Uh, this experiment was done by Stulzberg in 1999. Okay. So, he published this journal, sa Journal of Chemical Education. So, in this publication, we can see that, ano, sabi dito, inert salts shifts the equilibrium despite being not a part of the equilibrium equation. So, in this graph, sabi dito, naglagay lang daw siya ng asin, no? salt, potassium nitrate. Okay. So, naglagay siya ng ano, potassium nitrate sa solution. Di ba, dapat, according to Le Chate principle, hindi mababago yung equilibrium system. Kasi wala yung potassium and yung nitrate ion sa equation natin. So, the Le Chatelier principle will not be, uh, uh, hindi natin ma-apply yung Le Chatelier principle pag other ions yung nilagay natin. However, in reality, nagbabago yung equilibrium constant. No? So, pag naglagay ka ng inert salt, nagbabago daw yung equilibrium constant. So, that had the analytical chemist before thinking, why? Bakit daw kaya ganun, no? na may potassium nitrate ka, wala naman yun sa ano, equilibrium equation, pero bakit siya nag-shift, no? In this graph, nagbabago siya, bumababa yung equilibrium constant. Nagtataka sila, no? Bakit kaya, no? Okay? So, yun yung sasagutan, sasagutin natin ngayon. Bakit kaya, kapag naglagay tayo ng inert salts, the equilibrium seems to be affected, no? kahit wala siya sa equation. Here's another observation. This can be done in the laboratory. So, ito, nagawa ko rin to before. No? Actually, kahit sino pwede to gawin. No? Ang ginawa nila dito is that you have a calcium sulfate, which is a precipitate. No? So, yung calcium sulfate mo, lagay mo sa tubig. Mag-ionize yun to a very small extent. However, in the presence of inert salts, no, for example, potassium nitrate, pag naglagay ka daw ng potassium nitrate, your precipitate will dissolve more. Mas lalo daw siyang matutunaw. Ibig sabihin, the equilibrium will be shifted to the right. No? Okay? So, it will dissolve more. Ibig sabihin, the equilibrium will be shifted to the right. More ions will be produced. So, ibig sabihin, no, onti yung precipitate. Okay, so this can be done in the laboratory. So, may kita mo talaga, yung calcium sulfate kasi color white yan. So, pag nilagyan mo ng potassium nitrate, unti-unti na babawasan yung kulay white doon. So, ibig sabihin, the equilibrium system is shifted. Uh, yun yung question natin. Why? Because if you write the equilibrium constant here, okay, so since this is precipitate, the equilibrium constant is called the KSP or the solubility product constant. If you write the equilibrium constant for this, ano lang yan? Calcium 2 plus, SO4 minus 2. Pero walang potassium, wala ding nitrate, 
But how is that possible na nagbabago yung shifting ng ating equilibrium system despite na yung ating potassium nitrate wala siya sa equation? Okay? So, napaisip sila. So, bumalik sila dito sa idea ng hydrated ions. Sabi natin, kunwari, precipitate to. Yung interaction ng ions-ions natin, stronger than the ion-dipole interaction. So, that babalik talaga sila. However, in the presence of inert ions, nagbabago yung ating hydration sphere. Nagbabago itong ionic atmosphere natin. Okay? So, pakita natin yung pagbabago doon. Okay. So, ayun. As usual, we have the cations. Ito yung ionic atmosphere nila with water molecules. Uh, suppose ito ay calcium 2 plus and this is sulfate negative 2. Okay. So, ano nangyayari? In the presence of water alone, pwede sila magdikit ulit, no? Para maging precipitate kasi ion ion interaction. Stronger yan than ion dipole. So, magpre-precipitate uli yan. However, in the presence of inert ions, you are introducing different ions, no? So, kunwari, naglagay tayo ng potassium nitrate. Anong ions malalagay natin dyan? We have the K plus and the nitrate ions. So, what will happen is that this diverse ions, diverse ions, tawag din natin sa kanya, these diverse ions actually ay umiipit sila dito sa ionic atmosphere ng original ions natin. So, kumbaga, instead na sila yung magsama, yung calcium and yung sulfate, ang nangyayari, yung calcium kinakabitan ng nitrate and yung potassium kumakabit siya sa sulfate. So, nababawasan yung chances nila na mag magsama sila. Okay. So, ang idea is that if you add in uh, diverse ions, these diverse ions will flood the ionic atmosphere of your original ions. Okay? So, yung potassium, papalibutan nyo yung ano, anion mo. So, papalibutan nyo yan. And then, yung nitrate, ganun din. So, yung uh, calcium, papalibutan nila papalibutan siya ng nitrate ions. So, ano mangyayari? Because of this phenomena that, that, that yung diverse ions natin, sila yung pumalit sa original partners ng calcium pati ng sulfate, hindi na uli sila pwede magsama. Okay? Kasi may iba na silang kapartner. Okay? So, because of that, ito daw yung reason why the equilibrium seems to be shifted when we add inert salt sa ating precipitate. No? This is the reason why inert uh, precipitates become more soluble when you add inert salts. Bakit? Because the presence of inert salts hinder your ions to precipitate back. No? O sabi dito, the presence of the inert ions partially offset the charge of the cations and the anions, preventing them from sticking together again. So, the presence of these diverse ions stops them from coming back together. Okay. Eh, di ba naghiwalay na sila? Nas magsasama uli sila kapag tubig lang yan. Pero, since may iba tayong distraction, may iba tayong ions, what happens is that instead na sila yung mag-partner, napapalitan na sila ng ibang partner. So, hindi na uli sila mag-perform ng precipitate na. Okay. So, imagine this as your friends. Ito yung dalawang mong friends na on and off. Pakilala mo yan sa ibang tao. Hindi na sila mag on and off, no? most likely. Ganon din yung ions natin. Okay? And strong din naman yung interaction na to kasi ion to, ion to. Ion, ion. So, ion, ion interaction meron tayo dyan. So, ibig sabihin, the presence of diverse ions causes your, ano, it causes your original ions to uh, stop to stop coming back together para hindi na sila magsama ulit to form the precipitate. Okay? And yun yung pinaka main topic natin today na. No? We will talk about the phenomena of the diverse ion. Now, this is called the diverse ion effect, the salt effect or the electrolyte effect, no. So yun. So ano yung phenomena na to? Ano yung pinaka summary dito? Okay. So on this graph we have here 
ito yung first na precursor bago natin ma-call itong uh, itong buong idea. No? So, sabi lang dito is that if we have higher ionic activity, ibig sabihin nun marami tayong diverse ions, what will happen? Those, those diverse ions will start diffusing in the ionic atmosphere. So, yung mga diverse ions natin, sila na yung magpo-flood sa ionic atmosphere. For example, ito yung diverse ions. Instead na water lang yun nasa paligid nila, dudumugin nila yung original ions mo. Okay? So, what will be the result? The result is that the charge of your original ions will be lesser. No? Ibig sabihin nun, hihina na yung pagiging positive nito at hihina na yung pagiging negative nito due to, due to the presence of the other ions outside it. No? Okay? So, since mahina na yung kanyang forces, no? yung ating original ions, lesser na yung charge niya kasi napapalibutan na siya ng mga ibang ion, diverse ions, that means there will be a lesser interaction for your sparing the soluble salts. Ibig sabihin, yung ions mo that can form the precipitate, hindi na sila ganun ka-attracted sa isa't isa. Bakit? Attracted na sila sa others. Eh. Si calcium, meron na siyang nitrate. Si sulfate, meron na siyang potassium. So, ibig sabihin nun, hindi na necessary para sila ay magbalikan. No? So, finally, we will have less precipitation. Okay? So, this phenomena is called the salt effect electrolyte effect or diverse ion effect. No? So this tells us that diverse ions can actually change the equilibrium system as they flood the ionic atmosphere of your original substances. Okay. So nagbabago yung equilibrium talaga kahit wala sila sa equilibrium equation. Okay? So yun yung pinaka-general idea of our discussion today. So, let's discuss ionic strength. No? Kasi nasabi ko yung kanina. Ionic activity or ionic strength. What is that? No? When I say ionic strength or ionic activity, that pertains to the increase of the amounts of diverse ions. Ibig sabihin, naglagay ka ng ions na hindi similar dito sa nasa solution mo. Okay. So, yun yung ano, higher ionic activity or higher ionic strength. No? So, let's look at this graph by Mar Marzacco. Uh, this is published noong 1998, birth year ko, uh, in the Journal of Chemical Education. So, in this graph, we, sh we see here a precipitate, potassium hydrogen tartrate. That is an equilibrium to hydrogen tartrate ion and potassium ion. In this equilibrium setup, binago niya yung concentration ng different ano, diverse ions natin. So, tignan natin ano yung naging effect niya sa equilibrium constant nito. In this case, sa solubility niya. Okay, so tignan niya ha. Okay, so yan. Um, sana medyo zoom in na siya. Okay, so let's look at what happened, no? when we add magnesium sulfate, what happened to the solubility or to the equilibrium constant? Tumaas yung solubility. As a result, tumaas yung equilibrium constant. Bakit? Because nag-add siya ng diverse ions. Paano natin nalaman na diverse ions yan? May magnesium ba dito sa equation? Wala. May sulfate ba sa equation? Wala. So that means magnesium and sulfate ions most likely created boundaries between the two ions so that they will not come back together. Ano, binakuran na nila yung mga ions na yan para hindi na sila mag-come back, no? Okay? So ganyan, binakuran na nila yung ions na yan. So hindi na sila babalik. That's why the equilibrium is shifted to the right, no? Or there is an increase in the solubility of this precipitate. Okay. Uh, look, let's have a look at NaCl. So for sodium chloride, there is also an increase in the solubility or the equilibrium constant of this equation. 
Wala namang sodium sa equation. Wala ring chloride ion. So that means this is electrolyte effect, no? Or diverse ion effect. So what happened, most likely, si sodium pinalibutan ito, si potassium pinalibutan yon. As a result, di na sila magsasama ulit. So that means more ions will be produced, no? The equilibrium will be shifted to the right, no? So yun yung reason for magnesium sulfate and sodium chloride. They are bound by diverse ion effect. That's why they increase the solubility of our precipitate. Now, how about glucose? Uh, observe glucose. What happened? So for glucose, nothing happened. Now, so the equilibrium constant or the solubility of the precipitate under glucose, uh, when you add glucose to your solution, is constant, no? So, bakit? Bakit constant yan? Kasi, is glucose a charged particle? May charge ba yung glucose? Wala. Si 6H12O6 lang yan, organic molecule yan. So, wala tong charge. So, that means it will not flood the ionic atmosphere of this molecule and that molecule. So, hindi niya ipa-flood itong atmosphere neto. Ano lang yung pwede mang flood yung ions, such as magnesium sulfate, potassium chloride. Yung glucose, hindi siya, hindi siya ions. So, hindi niya papalibutan yung ionic atmosphere netong dalawa. So, as a result, walang effect. No? Wa effect siya. Matamis lang yung solution. <laughs> okay? How about potassium chloride? So, as you can see, potassium chloride, yung kanyang solubility nag-decrease or basically in terms of the equilibrium constant the equilibrium is shifted to the left so ganun yung nangyari dito KKCL the equilibrium was shifted to the left bakit? this was governed naman by the common ion effect okay. so this Yung phenomena kay KCL, kung bakit bumaba yung kanyang solubility na to, is because of the common ion effect. You increase the concentration of potassium, so according to the Chatea principle, the equilibrium will be shifted to the left. Alam nyo na kung paano big kasi itong arrow na pataas, no? Edge, uh, Elsa, yung ganun. Okay, so ganun. So pag in-increase mo to, the equilibrium will be shifted to the left. So, that is governed by the common ion effect. However, for magnesium sulfate and sodium chloride, the opposite occurs. No? So, what happens is that those diverse ions shield your original ions. No? Sineshield nila yan. So, as a result, di na sila magsasama uli. So, the equilibrium will tend to shift to the right. So, the solubility will increase. So that's the phenomena of the uh, of the diverse ion effect. Now. Okay. So since quantitative chemistry tayo, analytical chemistry tayo, dapat mini measure natin yung extent ng uh, effect ng electrolytes sa solution natin. So we can measure the ionic strength or the concentration of diverse ions in our solution using this equation. So we have mu equals one half the sum of the concentration in molarity times the charge squared. No. So this is a measure that will tell us kung gano kalaki yung extent ng diverse ion effect. No. Gano kalaki yung shift sa equilibrium. Okay. So, the greater the mu, the greater yung diverse ion effect. No? So, for precipitates, mas magiging soluble sila. However, the lower the mu, hindi, ano, almost the same na lang siya as the equilibrium constant. Pag ganun. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, walang magbabago kapag masyadong mababa yung mu. Okay? So, again, pag mataas yung mu, mas ano mas 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 evident yung effect ng ions ng diverse ions sa inyong equilibrium okay so basahin niyo as mu 
Okay, pataas daw yung tono pag may ganyan. So, let's calculate the following, uh, the ionic strength of the following mixtures. No? So, using the equation here. No? So, apply natin yan dito. So, let's have number one. We have um, 0 0.10 molar sodium nitrate. Okay. So, paano natin kukunin yung ionic strength niyan? So, ano unang gagawin natin? You dissociate your sodium nitrate into ions. No? Yun yung mangyayari sa ano eh, ions natin pag nasa tubig, di ba? Maghihiwalay sila into cation and then ion. So, let's show the, ano, let's show the dissociation reaction. So, it will produce sodium ion and nitrate an ion. Tig isa lang. If the concentration of sodium nitrate is 0.1 molar, what will be the concentration of the other species? The concentration of the other species can be determined by stoichiometry. So stoic na lang ang gagawin natin so we can measure the amounts of sodium and the amounts of nitrate. So kung ito ay 0.1, ito ay 0.1 then, and this one is also 0.1. Bakit? Because since ang kanilang stoichiometric coefficient ay equal, so one yung coefficient dito, one yung coefficient doon, one coefficient doon, that means the molarities are also equal. Oh, sir, kunwari may times 2 dyan, edi ta times 2 mo yun. Oh, kunwari may times 3 dyan, edi times 3 mo yun. Okay? So we still follow the law of conservation of mass or basically stoic na. No? So, nag-stoic lang tayo dito. So, yan. Ito na. Yung ating 0.1 molar sodium nitrate ion, uh, solution, we have 0.1 molar of sodium and 0.1 molar nitrate ion. So, for us to calculate the ionic strength, we use the formula mu equals 1 half, the sum of the concentration of your species times their charges squared. Ano yung species natin dito? We have the sodium and the nitrate ions. Ipa-plug in natin yon dito sa equation. So let's write the expression for mu. Mu is one half times the molarity of sodium ion times the charge of sodium ion squared plus the molarity of nitrate ion times the charge of nitrate ion squared. No. So this is the expression for mu for this reaction here. So gagawin mo lang, itong sum of concentration times the charge square, yung kung ano yung ions na mapoproduce mo, yun yung isa-substitute mo doon. So being for mu, we have one half. What's the molarity of sodium ion? That's given as 0.1 times what is the charge of sodium? Positive 1. So that will be 1 squared. Plus nitrate ion. The concentration according to stoichiometry is 0 0.1 times what is the charge of the nitrate ion? negative 1. If you take the square of negative 1, you will get positive 1 lang din. Okay? So, overall, what's mu? What's the ionic strength? It's equal to 0 0.1 molar. I mental nyo na lang. So, this is 0.1 times 1, the 0.1. 0.1 times, this is already 1. So, 0.1 times 1, edi 0.1 then. 0.1 plus 0.1, 0.2, divided by 2, 0.1 ulit na. So, so ganun lang. Pwede nyo naman i-mental na tong part na to. Unless kapag yan ay ibang numbers na. Doon nagka-calcue na talaga ako. Pero kapag 1-1 one, one lang, ah, kaya nyo na yan na. Mental-mental lang. So, the ionic strength of the solution is given as 0 0.1 molar. So, ibig sabihin yan, mayroong nangyayaring 
electrolyte effect na no? may diverse ion effect na sa solution natin if mayroong equilibrium system doon uh, let's try another item uh, let's have number 2 so for number 2 we have sodium sulfate or you write the dissociation equation for sodium sulfate so, ano yung mapaproduce nating ions dito? We will produce 2 moles of sodium ion and 1 mole of sulfate anion. Bakit naging 2 moles yung sodium? Yung 2 na subscript doon, if it is going to be an ion, magiging coefficient siya nun. So, yung 2 dito magiging coefficient kapag yung ating sodium magiging ion. Okay. So, ganun lang. The molarity of sodium sulfate is 0 0.01. What is the molarity of sodium ion? As I told you, this, that can be obtained using stoichiometry. So, kung ito ay 0 0.01, this is twice the original molarity. Okay? Kasi, Isang mole nito, dalawang sodium produce So, that means times 2 yung molarity mo. How about the sulfate ion? So, since they have the same coefficient, 1 is to 1 sila, the molarity of sulfate is 0 0.01 molar. Once you were able to determine the concentration of your ionic species, then you can write the expression for mu. That's one half the sum of the concentration times their charges squared. For our equation here, mu is equals to one half times the concentration of the sodium times the charge of the sodium ion squared plus the concentration of sulfate ion times the charge of the sulfate and ion squared. Okay. So let's plug in our numbers. The concentration of sodium is 0 0.02 molar times the charge of sodium, positive 1. So that is 1 squared. For sulfate ion, that is 0 0.01. Okay. You multiply it by the charge squared. So that is negative 2 squared ah, what is mu what is the ionic strength ah, try natin i-mental although pwede naman i-calculator no? so this will be 0 0.04 be 0 0.02 so the mu is equal to 0 0.03 molar bakit ganon uh, yes po, Alexander. Sir, pwede po mag-ask kung bakit po yung NA na may 2 lang po yung nagkaroon ng coefficient, hindi po kasama yung sa SO4. Okay. So, bakit yung sodium lang yung may 2 uh, na coefficient? Kasi according to the formula, ilang moles ng sodium meron tayo dito? 2, dahil dun sa subscript na yan. So, ibig sabihin, we have two sodium atoms. So, to balance the equation, mayroon tayong coefficient na doon. However, for sulfate ion, remember, ginagawa natin last semester, we place parenthesis kay sulfate ion. Pag walang nakalagay sa lower, uh, lower right side ng iyong parenthesis, that means isang mole lang ng sulfate ion meron ka. So, you can do balancing dito, actually. So, ang common na uh, technique dito is ganito. Um, yung inyong metal atoms, kung ano yung subscript nila, yun yung nagiging coefficient nila. Same as for the anions. Kunwari, may 3 dito. Kunwari lang, ha? O, kunwari, may 3 dyan. Doon ka maglalagay ng 3 sa sulfate. However, in our case, walang ganon. Kaya, 1 lang yung coefficient ni sulfate. 
Ayun. Okay, thank you po. Okay, so thank you. Ayun na. So ganun lang. Um, pwede i-balance niyo na lang din. Okay. So ganun. So, kailangan uh, familiar na kayo with the polyatomic ions, their correct formula, so that alam nyo na yung mag magiging corresponding charges nila. No? So, as long as tama yung gawa nyo dito, you will get the correct answer. So, yan. So, mu is equal to 0 0.03. Okay. Bakit naging 0.03 yan? Kasi ito, 0.02 plus 0.04. Magiging 0.06 yan, divided by 2, at di 0.03 na. Okay? So, yun yan, sagot. Uh, let's have number 3. Hala, paano yan? Ang dami. Meron kang KBR, meron kang sodium sulfate. If you have a mixture of diverse ions, ipag a mo lang yung kanilang mu. Okay? Pagsasamahin mo lang yung mu nila. Okay. So, yung ating so sodium sulfate, na-solve na natin yun eh. Di ba? Ayun na, nakalagay na. Oh. So, ang gagawin na lang natin ay yung kay KBR. So, alamin na lang natin kung ano yung kay KBR. So, let's erase this na lang. Meron na tayo kay sodium sulfate. KBR na lang. Kunin natin. So, for potassium bromide, this will dissociate into... K plus and Br minus. So, according to this, number 3, potassium bromide is 0 0.02 molar. So, what will be the concentration of potassium ion? Same lang, because they all have the same coefficients. Kapag may 2 dito, ta times 2 mo yun. Kapag may 3 dito, times 3 yun. Okay. However, in our case, 1 is to 1 yung lahat ng coefficient. So, whatever the molarity of your salt is, yun ay molarity ng ions natin doon. Okay. So, for this ion that is solved for mu, that's 1 half the concentration of K plus times the charge of K plus squared plus the concentration of bromide times the charge of the bromide squared. So, mu is equals to 1 half times, what's the concentration of potassium? 0 0.02 times, what is the charge of potassium? And di syempre, positive 1. Okay. So, positive 1 siya. Plus, what's the concentration of bromide ions? Yun ay 0 0.02 times the charge of bromide ion is negative 1 squared. What's mu? Oh, mental math. Na? So, this is 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Pag pinag-add mo yan, 0 0.04 divided by 2. So, the answer is 0 0.02 molar. So, that's only for KBR. So, that's the mu of KBR. For sodium sulfate, na-solve na natin siya kanina, 0 0.03. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, ipag-add na lang natin silang dalawa. So, the mu total is equal to the mu of KBR plus the mu of sodium sulfate. So, the mu total is equal to 0 0.02 molar plus 0 0.03 molar. So, overall, the mu total for number 3 is 0 0.05. So, that is the overall ionic strength of this solution. Okay? So, ganun lang mag-solve ng ionic strength. Okay, so again, skip muna natin ulit tong ionic strength. Di ba sabi natin kanina that yung ating equilibrium, that is affected by the diverse ion according to our explanation. 
obvious naman, di ba? By logic, acceptable naman siya because the diverse ion will be attracted to your ions, your original ions. So, ibig sabihin, less chances for them to come back together. Mukhang logical naman, di ba? However, still, may question tayo. Di ba, we write the equilibrium constant in terms of the concentration. Ang challenge for analytical chemists that time is, paano mo ipapakita yung effect ng diverse ion sa inyong equilibrium constant? So, they come up with this answer, the ionic activity. So, what is an ionic activity? An ionic activity is the product of the concentration of your species and your activity coefficient gamma. Okay. So, pag pinag-multiply mo daw itong dalawang to, that will give you an idea about the activity of that ion in your solution. Pag sinabing activity, hindi lang siya about concentration. It also includes the idea about the ionic atmosphere. Di ba sa equilibrium constant, K is equals concentration lang. That's an ideal assumption kasi. Now, iniisip natin doon that Ions do not have atmospheres, etc., etc. So, yun yung reason bakit concentration lang yung K natin before. So, we assume that the ions do not have this atmosphere. But in reality, there are atmospheres no, for our ions in the solution. So, we have to, in, uh, we have to include that by multiplying the concentration by the activity coefficient, gamma. The product of the two is the activity of our ion. So again, activity is a factor used to describe the departure from ideal behavior for a reaction mixture from unity. So ibig sabihin, itong gamma na to, this is a measure by how much yung deviation niya from idealism, no? or for, for, ano, from ideal conditions. No? So, ano ba yung ideal? Yung walang ionic atmosphere. Pero ang reality, meron. No? So, yung factor that will tell you by how much yung difference nila, ng ideal pati ng real behavior nila, we use the gamma or the activity coefficient. Okay? So, in order to express the effect of ionic strength on the concentration of species, we calculate its activity with the use of activity coefficient given in the units of gamma. Okay. So, pag sinabing activity, ito na yung overall. May concentration ka na and at the same time, you are including the ionic atmosphere factor. Okay. So, that, that's why we have to rewrite our equilibrium constant. Our understanding of equilibrium constant is to ideal. Ibig sabihin, babaguhin natin yung equilibrium constant. Diba? Parang isang linggo na nakalipas, babaguhin na naman natin siya. No? Don't worry, for this chapter lang to. For the next chapters, back to normal ulit tayo. Kakalimutan na natin to ulit. No? So, may explain lang natin itong phenomena na to. Okay, so again, our understanding of equilibrium constant is limited. It is too idealistic, no? So, to make it real, to account for the ionic atmospheres, we have to rewrite our equilibrium equation. That is, if you have an equilibrium reaction, AA plus BB, forming the product C and B, the correct form of the equilibrium is given as the activities of your product divided by the activities of your reactants. No. So, ito na yung correct version ng ating equilibrium constant because it includes the factor for the ionic atmosphere. So, that's why kahit wala tayong diverse ions sa ating equation, nagpe-play role pa rin sila in the form of the activity coefficient gamma. Yun yung na-oversight before. No? Nung ginagawa nila tong topic na to, nung dinidiscover nila tong equilibrium, yun yung na-oversight nila. They forgot na mayroong ionic atmosphere. 
So, ang ginawa dito, kinorect natin by introducing gamma, the activity coefficient. Okay. So, ayan. So, we now write our equilibrium in terms of activities. So, that's activities of the products divided by the reactant. So, stay, same manner pa rin. However, we just included the gamma no? or the activity coefficient. Dinagdag lang natin siya. If you combine the, co ano, if you combine the concentrations that will give you the original K multiplied by your gammas. No? Yung mga gamma-gamma na yan, no? pinagsama-sama mo lang. Okay. If ideal ang ating behavior, meaning wala tayong diverse ions, all these gamma values will be equal to 1. Pag walang ano, pag walang ano, uh, ibang ions. But in the presence of other ions, we have to account for the gamma, the activity coefficient. Kasi magbabago yung K. So, yun yung reason bakit ganun na. Okay? So, suppose yung ating equation kanina, yung calcium sulfate, we can write the equilibrium expression, yung generic equilibrium expression ay Ksp, concentration ng calcium ion over sulfate ion. So, ito yung gen generic equation na ginagawa natin last time. But, today, we learned that kulang to. It doesn't account for the ionic activities. No. So, we we now write it as K prime equals the, al ano, the activity of calcium and the activity of sulfate. We know that activity is concentration times gamma. So, we express that as this. No? And express lang natin yung activity into concentration times gamma, concentration times gamma. And if you combine the concentrations, that's equivalent to your Ksp times your gamma values. So ito lang yung nadagdag talaga, yung gamma. Again, bakit dinagdag natin yung gamma or the activity coefficient? To account for the ionic atmosphere. So, ganun. So, let's practice no, on writing the uh, solubility product expression for the two salts here, including their activity coefficients, no, yung gamma. So, ito, we have lanthanum 3 sulfate. Okay, so let's practice kung paano tayo magdi-dissociation reaction. So, since this is solubility product, most likely ito ay precipitate. So, ito ay solid. Then, it will dissociate into ions. Okay? So, yun yung idea kapag ganyan. So, we write the equation for the dissociation of this ion. No? Uh, we have La2SO4, 3. Anong ions produce natin dito? We will produce lanthanum and sulfate ions. Anong charge ng lanthanum? Okay, we do the reverse crisscross, no? Saan galing yung 3 na to? Galing yan kay La, no? So that's why lanthanum is 3 plus. Saan galing yung 2 dito? Kay sulfate, no? So sulfate is negative 2. So the ions that we will produce is La3 plus and sulfate minus 2. Pero hindi pa tayo tapos. We have to balance them. Okay? So, we have two lanthanum atoms here. So, times 2, yung La. We have three sulfate ions here. So, dapat times 3, yung SO4. Again, if you forgot kung ano yung charges nila, you can do the reverse crisscross. No? San galing yung 3? Kay La. San galing yung 2? Kay SO4. Yun yung reverse crisscross. So, yan. So, let's write the generic Ksp muna. No? The solubility product constant. So, when you say Ksp, yun yung ordinary K value lang dito. So, this is solid. No? Solid yan. Ito ay parehas Aquarius. 
So that will be lanthanum 3 plus squared times sulfate ion cube. Okay, so again, yung coefficients, we turn that into uh, superscripts no? or exponents. So ito yung dating alam natin that KSP is just this. However, we now know that this is incorrect no? if we consider the ionic activities no, or the ionic atmosphere. So the correct version is K prime equals the activity of lanthanum 3 plus squared times the activity of sulfate ion cube. So basically, itong square bracket, palitan mo ng letter A. Ganun lang. Then, ano alam natin? Activity is concentration times the activity coefficient, gamma. So, substitute natin yan dito. So, that will be the concentration of lanthanum 3 plus square, gamma of lanthanum 3 plus square, concentration of sulfate ion cube, times the gamma of sulfate ion cube. So, okay na yan. Actually, Okay na yan. Acceptable na tong sulat na to. However, we can combine the con um, we can combine the concentrations to write the KSP. No? Pwede pagsamahin natin yung parehas na concentration. So, we can write KSP times the gamma ng tanyong 3 plus square times gamma sulfate ion cube. So, ito yung two correct versions ng ating equilibrium constant. So ako, ito ginagamit ko. Ito, M lang yan. Pinakita lang natin dito that related yung K prime, yung correct, sa KSP, yung original. Okay. So, yung corrected that is related to your original understanding of K, ang kailangan mo lang gawin ay i-multiply siya sa activity coefficients dun sa ionic uh, atmosphere factor. Ito yung nakalimutan dati. Ah, punta tayo dito sa baba. Ah, let's write the solubility product expression for copper 3 sulfate. Copper 3 sulfate. Anong ions produce natin dito? Malamang, we have copper and then we will have sulfate ions. And sulfate, negative 2 yan. Ano yung charge ng copper? Reverse crystals. Saan galing 2 na to? Kay sulfate. Saan galing yung 3? Kay copper. So, the charge of copper is copper 3 plus and for sulfate, that's negative 2 by default. Then, oh, we balance this equation. We have two copper atoms here. So, two times two mo yun. And on the right side, we have three sulfate ions as indicated by the subscript outside the parenthesis. So, three SO4 katumbas nun. So, ibig sabihin, ito times three natin. Yung SO4 product natin. Let's write the original K. KSP natin. That is copper 3 plus squared sulfate ion. Ayusin ko lang ito. Naging tritoloy. So that's sulfate ion cube na. So this is the original K. Ito yung unang understanding natin sa K. However, today we realize na this is uh, incomplete. Now we have to account for the activities na. So, we write K prime equals activity of copper 3 plus squared times the activity of sulfate ion cube. San equal yung activity? Concentration times the gamma. So, we express this as concentration and gamma. So, we have concentration copper 3 plus squared, gamma copper 3 plus squared. Concentration of sulfate ion cube, gamma ng sulfate ion 
cute. By the way, our exponents has to be distributed. Manare, ito is a substitute mayan dito. You have to distribute your exponents. Kasi sabi sa algebra, a b square is equals to a square b square. Okay. And distribute your exponents. Okay. Uh, suppose I want to combine my concentration, so I will get my KSP. K prime is equal now to KSP times gamma of copper 3 plus squared. Naantok na yung kamay po. <laughs> Kanina pa itong umaga nagsusulat. Eh. And gamma sulfate ion Q. So these two are the correct way of writing the new equilibrium constant given that we already know na kulang yung ating gawa ng nakaraan. Okay? Pero again, wag kayo, ano, wag kayo malulula. Bakit? Kasi this topic is good for this chapter lang. No, in the future topics, back to normal tayo. Balik tayo sa concentration lang. Kalimutan uli natin itong activities. No? We just try to explain kung ano yung behavior ng totoo. Pinakita lang natin yung totoong behavior nila. Okay? So, yan. So, let's talk about gamma. No? Say, okay, so, gamma will tell us about the, ano, the influence of the ion sa equilibrium. No? So, yan. So, alamin natin kung ano yung mga iba pa niyang properties. Okay? So, we say here that the activity coefficients, these are the measure no, of determining the effectiveness of the influence of your species in an equilibrium system. So, pinapakita natin dito kung ano yung effect ng diverse ion sa ating equilibrium expression. So, if you have dilute solution, that means... The activity coefficient is unity. When you say unity, that's equal to 1. However, if you have, ano, if in the presence of diverse ions, dun siya nag-start mag-deviate sa unity. So it becomes less than 1. Okay. Again, for very dilute solutions, virtually water lang nandun, What's the value for the gamma, the activity coefficient? Shy equals 1 in the presence of water alone. However, in the presence of diverse ions, dun siya nag-start bumaba sa 1. It starts to deviate from unity. Okay. So, yun. Ayun pa ba. Uh, number 2, in solutions that are not too concentrated, the activity coefficient, is dependent of the is independent of the nature of electrolyte and dependent only on the ionic strength. So actually, this is an equation. Itong number two. Mamaya pakita ko sa inyo. Okay, so number three, according to this, for a given ionic strength, the activity coefficient decreases more dramatically from units as the charge of the species increases. Na. Ibig sabihin, kapag mas malaki daw yung charge ng ating diverse ions, mas malaki yung change sa gamma. So, that means bigger effect sa equilibrium. As you can see dito sa ating table kanina, mas malaki yung effect ng magnesium sulfate compared to sodium chloride. Bakit? Yung charge sa sodium pati sa chloride ay 1 lang. However, for magnesium and sulfate yan ay 2. So, 2 yung factor nila. No? Bale, magiging parang times 4 yung effect niyan kasi naka-square yung charges, di ba? So, that's why yung graph natin for magnesium sulfate, that is very different with the graph for sodium chloride. Para naging times 4 yung effect nun. Okay, kasi sabi natin, the greater the charge of your diverse ions, the greater the effect no, for, for your equilibrium. Mas malaki yung effect niya sa activity coefficients. Number 4, the activity of uh, the activity coefficient of uncharged molecule is unity. Ibig sabihin, 1 yon, Regardless kung gaano kadami nilagay mo siya. Regardless of the ionic strength. So that also explains yung glucose kanina. 
So glucose is uncharged molecule. So that means the activity of glucose, no, yung activity coefficient niya ay equal sa 1. Kasi wala siyang charge. Wala siyang ano, ionic atmosphere. Okay. So kasi hindi siya ion. So that means gamma is 1 for glucose. Kaya unaffected yung equilibrium constant. Okay. So yan. However, for the others, sila ay may ions, sila ay may charges, so affected yung equilibrium constant. But for molecules that are uncharged, walang nangyayari. Okay. And then number five, at any given ionic strength, the activity coefficients of the ions of the same charge are approximately equal. The only difference or the only source of the variation is the size of the hydrated ions. No? Ibig sabihin nila, almost same lang sila ng ano, activity coefficient, ng gamma value. The only change is yung um, size ng ating hydration sphere. Okay? So, yan, so alam na natin yung properties ng gamma. Ang maximum number niya ay 1. Okay? So, 1 yan, kapag yan, ay ano, kapag yan ay very dilute solution, ibig sabihin walang diverse ions, o kaya 1 yan kapag uncharged yung iyong species, no? kasi wala siyang ionic atmosphere. Pero, how about yung below 1? Paano natin mako-compute yun? So, to compute for the activity coefficient, we use the Debye-Uckel equation. So, huwag kayo mabulaga, no? Ayan. This is the D by Uckel equation. Diba? E sana namang masamang pangitain. <laughs> okay. Well, don't worry. Mamaya may sasabihin ako sa inyo na big relief about this. No? Pero mamaya na. Enjoyin muna natin itong equation na to. So this equation is the D by Uckel equation. We use this to calculate the value for the activity coefficient gamma. So, as we can see, the variables included in our d by Uckel equation is the gamma itself, the activity coefficient, thing inahanap natin. We have the z squared, the charge. No? So, that's why sabi kanina, the charge affects the value of gamma. Also, we have the mu. Okay, so that's the ionic strength. So, depending on your ionic strength, your mu will have different, uh, your, ano, your gamma will have different values. And this alpha x, this tells us about the diameter of the hydrated ions in nanometers. So that is the size of the ion. No? So the bigger the size of the ion, the greater the value for gamma, or the greater the deviation. Okay. So, and vice versa. Okay. So ganun yun nangyayari dito. So there are four other factors i mean there are three factors that affect the value for the gamma namely the charge of your ion the ionic strength of your solution and the size of the hydrated ion in nanometer units okay so yeah if your ionic activity uh, i if your ionic strength is less than 0 0.01 molar then this big equation here can be reduced to this. Okay, so if the ionic activity, uh, ionic strength rather, nabubulol na. So if the ionic strength is less than 0 0.01, then we can use the D by Uckel limiting law equation. So it removes the factor for the uh, ionic size, no? the hydration size. So, mas simple lang siya gamitin. Pero may limitation. Okay? So, for now, uh, wag muna tayo ma-overwhelm kasi mamaya may papakita ko sa inyo na shortcut. Na. Actually, hindi siya shortcut. Ito talaga yung ginagawa naming technique. Na. So, para yung technique na yun that will help us not to use this equation anymore. Okay? So, sa ngayon, practicein muna natin tong D by Uckel equation. So let's answer this problem. Find the activity coefficient of hydronium ion, gamma H+, in 0.05 molar NaCl solution. 
given that the ionic this is a uh, no, diameter given that the ionic diameter of h plus is 900 picometers no? so pinapahanap yung gamma and we have 0 0.05 molar NaCl solution. So this is diverse ion. Hanapin daw ang gamma. So the first thing you're going to do is to solve for the mu. Important si ionic strength. Kaya nga ito yung unang sinasolve natin kanina. Because depending on the value of your mu, your gamma will change. No? So alamin muna natin yung mu for this solution. Okay, so we have NaCl. This will dissociate as Na plus and Cl minus. So what will be the concentration of our ions? The concentration will be the same lang. Kasi iisa lang yung kanilang coefficient. Pare-pareha silang 1. So to solve for mu, that is 1 half the charge, uh, the concentration of sodium ion times its charge squared, the concentration of chloride ions times its charge squared. Plug in, we have one half. Uh, we have one half. Concentration of Na is 0 0.05 molar times 1 squared, that is the charge of sodium. The concentration of chloride is 0 0.05 times negative 1 squared. So still 1 yen. Uh, solve for mu. Uh, the answer is 0 0.05 molar. Bakit naging ganun? Uh, this is 0 0.05 times 1, it is 0 0.05. This is 0 0.05 times another one. So 0 0.05 uli yan. Pag-add mo sila, 0 0.1 yon. Divide mo sa 2. 0 0.05 ulit. No? So kaya mo siya i-mental math. No? Titigan mo lang siya. Pag di na kaya, pwede naman i-calcule. Okay. So that is your mu. So yun yung first na gagawin nyo when solving for activity coefficients. Always solve for the mu. Okay, so ano pa yung mga kailangan natin na info? So we already have the mu. Ano pa sabi doon? Kailangan natin ng alpha. H plus, the ionic size of H plus. Given na yun, na, yung diameter niya is 900 picometer. But we need nanometers. Kailangan nanometers, sabi dito. So... To convert picometers into nanometer, this is just the equation, 1,000 picometer is equal to 1 nanometer. So that means alpha H plus or the size of the ion, of hydronium ion, is 0 0.9 nanometers. What else? Ano pa kailangan natin? All. Yung Z ng H plus, no? Yung charge ng hydronium ion. Bakit H plus? Kasi yun yung hinahanap natin, yung sa H plus. Eh. So what is the charge of H plus? Well, the of course, positive 1. So now we have the three info necessary to compute for the gamma, the activity coefficient. Let us now use the Debye-Uckel equation. Oh, hindi pwede dito yung Debye-Uckel limiting law because 0 0.05 to. Sabi dito, less than 0 0.01. So, ito gagamitin natin. This big equation here. So, let me write the Debye-Uckel equation. That's negative log gamma H plus equals 0 0.51 charge of H plus squared, square root of mu, all over 1 plus 3.3 Alpha of H plus square root of mu. Makakabisado mo na lang siya. So yun, meron na tayong Z, meron na tayong mu, meron na tayong alpha. Okay, na natin masolve yung gamma. Okay. However, our gamma is inside the logarithm function. 
So, para ma-solve mo yung nasa loob ng log function, you have to do the anti-log. No? Kailangan ilabas mo siya sa loob ng log. Okay? Kaya pwede naman mag-shift solve kayo. Alam ko, alam nyo na mag-shift solve. No? May technique na akong shinare dun sa YouTube. So, pwede nyo yan i-shift solve. However, medyo matagal. <laughs> so, dumadating yung time na nakatulala kami sa calcul namin for one minute, tapos bigla-bigla nakalagay. Error. Diba? <laughs> Nakainis lang. Kaya, maganda tulungan mo na yung calcul mo. Ikaw na mag-derive-derive ng ibang mga bagay. Okay. Kawawa naman kasi siya. So, tanggalin natin yung gamma sa log. Let's do the antilog. First, you multiply both sides by negative 1 para matanggal yung negative sa harap. So, mapupunta siya sa dito. So, sa numerator ko na ilagay. Then, you have the log. Gagawin natin itong dalawang equation na to. Gagawin natin siyang exponent ng 10. So, we have 10 raised to log gamma h plus equals 10 raised to negative 0 0.51 zh plus squared square root of mu divided by 1 plus 3.3 .3 alpha h plus square root of mu. Okay, so ito yung antilog. No? Yung equation mo, yung buong function mo, gagawin mong exponent ng 10. Yun yung sinasabing antilog. Okay. So what will happen? The logarithm and the base 10 function, they will cancel out each other. No? They are inverse functions. No? So ibig sabihin, magka-cancel out yung mga function na yan. So your gamma, bababa na siya. So to solve for gamma h plus, this will be our working equation. Gamma h plus equals 10 raised to negative 0.51 z square square root of mu all over 1 plus 3.3 .3 alpha square root of mu. Okay. So dito natin ipa-plug in yung numbers dito sa gilid. So let me rewrite this. I rewrite ko, don't worry. Wala na akong space eh. Teka lang. Kamali. ZH plus square pala. H plus square. Okay. So this is our um, derived form of the gamma from the Debye-Uckel equation. What's left for us to do is to plug in the Z, the mu, and the alpha. Ayun numbers lang ilalagay niya because the units will never cancel out pag ganitong topic. So plug in mo yung z, 51. Z is positive 1 squared. Square root of mu is 0.05 molar. So you have 1 plus 3.3 .3 alpha mo is 0 0.9 nanometers times the square root of 0 0.05. Ayan, pakikalik yun na lang. Okay. Kabisado ko na kasi yung sagot. Ayan ang sagot na. Sagot dito will be 0 0.85 na. Sige, so pindot-pindot lang kayo. Double check ko kung tama pag nakaalala ko. Okay, so 0 0.854 yung sagot. Uh, I will uh, i-ano ko na lang, two decimal places. So that's 
the Gamma H+. Kung mag-YouTube kayo, um, onti lang kaming may ganitong discussion. So actually, may ganitong version ako ng discussion last year. Uh, that was because nag, ano, yun yung first time mag-online classes, no? Okay, so nag-upload ako ng ganitong lesson and since onti lang kaming gumagawa ng lesson dito sa topic na to, kasi medyo mahirap siya intindihin talaga sa first try. Ayun. So, sa YouTube, ito yung isa sa mga most watched video ko. <laughs> Itong lesson about this. Nakikita mo doon yung mga Indian, nagko-comment. Kakatawa nga. Di ba usually yung Indian doon tayo nakikinig? Mas ngayon baliktad. No? Sila nakikinig sa akin. <laughs> Ayan lang. Kasi onti lang talaga yung mga nagdi-discuss nito sa YouTube. <laughs> Kaya yan. Kaya kung maghahanap kayo sa YouTube, basically babalik din kayo sa channel ko doon. <laughs> So, yan. So, that is the value for gamma. That's 0.85. Ah, ganun lang. Hindi naman siya intimidating talaga, no? Mukha lang. Pero alam mo naman kung paano mag-derive using, ano eh, gam, ano eh, using the antelog, ba? Diba? So, basta alam mo kung paano gumamit ng antelog, mabubuhay ka sa anak em. Okay. So, yan, no? Easy lang, oh. Hindi ba? Okay. So, ayan. So, mapapansin nyo that your gamma is less than 1. That means the ionic atmosphere is taken into account na. No? Kailangan na natin siya i-consider because of the ionic strength. If ang ionic strength natin ay 0, what will happen to this entire equation? Itong equation sa taas. Pag 0 itong ano, mu mo, this will all be equal to 0. 10 raised to 0 is equal to 1. So that's why, if our solution is dilute, that means gamma is equal to 1. So kapag 0 ang mu, 1 ang gamma. Kaya binubura natin yung gamma. Tinatanggal natin yung gamma dun sa previous topic. Ngayon, hindi na ganun yung case. We have to include the uh, ionic strength. Kaya nagbabago yung gamma. Ayan lang. Share ko lang. Uh, next problem. Bago ko i-share yung technique. Kasi yung technique, sasabihin nyo, pakahirap pa tayo. May ganun naman pala. Mm -mm. Okay. So, punta tayo. Second problem. The, find the activity coefficient of sodium in 0 0.005 molar NaCl given that the ionic radius of sodium is 450 Picometers. Uh, diameter to. Ba na to typo ako dito? Okay. So, ayan. Oh, so, for mu. Now, ako, alam ko na mentally kung, pan, kung ano yung value ng mu. The value of mu is 0 0.005 molar. Alam niyo kung ano yung technique ko dyan. Share ko na lang. Kapag NaCl yung species mo, anari, NaCl, KBr, KCl, etc. Basta positive 1, negative 1 yung charge ng cation, pati anion. Kung ano yung molarity ng iyong salt, yun na yung mu. Okay? So, yun yung shortcut ko. So, kapag positive 1, negative 1 yung charge ng iyong ions, kung ano yung concentration niya, yun na rin yung mu. Yun yung shortcut. Tignan nyo. 0.05. O, oh, yun din naman yung mu, ba? Pero kapag hindi na yan, unari, may positive 2 na yan, may negative 2 na, ah, wala, hindi na gumagana yung shortcut ko doon. <laughs> so, i-manual solving mo yun. So, yun yung isi-share ko sa inyo. Para kapag, unari, nag-quiz kayo, nakita mo yun, plus 1 to, negative 1 to. Yung charges nila, plus 1, negative 1. Oh, kung ano yung concentration niya, yun ay mu, ba? Nakatipid kayo ng ano, isang minuto. Kaya nyo sasagutan in 5 seconds. Diba? Isang tingin lang. Okay, ito agad yung sagot. So, ganun lang. Sa chemistry kasi, um, to be honest with you, it is more on familiarization lang talaga. Uh, so, I've been doing this for years na. Kaya kung ano, ah, ito yung sagot dyan. <laughs> uh, ganun na lang. Mauumay ka na lang sa solving eh. 
So ayan, that is our mu. And also, look, na, our mu is less than 0 0.01. Okay. According to this slide, when mu is less than 0 0.01, we can use the Debye-Yukel limiting law. Ito yung Debye-Yukel limiting law, DL, DHLL. Okay, so ayan. We can use this to solve for the gamma. Okay, so let me write the DHLL. That's negative log gamma H plus equal to uh, 0 0.51 um, ZH plus square, square root of mu. So, binura na natin yung denominator kanina. Okay. So, ito, nakalog to. So, get your antilog to get gamma H plus. So, that will be 10 raised to negative 0 0.51 ZH plus squared, square root of mu. Now, basically, kung ano yung equation nyo kanina, burahin mo lang yung denominator. Yun na yung Debye-Yukel di limiting law. Buburahin mo lang yung denominator. Okay. That is if your mu is uh, 0 0.01 below. Uh, you plug in your numbers, gamma H plus. So we have 0 0.51, which is, what is the Z of sodium? Ah, uh, sodium pala to, sorry. But H plus nilagay ko. Sodium pala. Literal na kinopya yun. <laughs> So that's sodium, okay? So the charge of sodium is positive one square times the square root of mu, which is 0 0.005. Solve for the gamma of sodium. So that is equal to 0 0.92. Okay. So yeah. So that's how we use the Debye-Yukel equation and the Debye-Yukel limiting law. We use them to solve for the activity coefficient. No. So the lesser it is, uh, I mean, the more deviated it is from 1. No. Ibig sabihin kapag less than 1 siya, that means malaki yung effect ng diverse ions mo sa inyong equilibrium. And kapag kunwari 0 0.5 na yan, o kaya 0 0.3, sabihin ang tindi na ng effect ng diverse ions mo. Hindi mo na siya pwede i-neglect. No? Nagagamit ba to sir, sa totoong buhay? Yes, no? sa thesis, nagagamit to. Okay? So especially when you're dealing with solutions, no? kunwari may mga enzymes ka, they can be affected kasi by the I, ano, they can be affected by the diverse ions. No? Yung behavior nila, yung activity nila, affected din yun by the ions. No? Uh, that's why siguro may kita nyo na lang ulito pag nag-thesis kayo, especially if yung thesis nyo is about preparing solutions, no? and then maghahalo-halo kayo ng proteins, enzymes. No? You have to account for the activities no? and the ionic strength. Dun, dun na lang mo uli siya may kita. Pero in our semester, ngayon nyo lang siya may kita, and, and then sa midterms, then after done, pwede na uli mamahinga. <laughs> pwede nyo na siya itabi uli sa baul. Okay. Pero again, magagamit nyo to, especially when you're in research field in the future. So hopefully, pag dumating na kayo sa ganun time, maalala nyo ako. <laughs> maalala nyo yung mga pinaggagawa natin sa equation. Okay? So anyway, um, this is the shortcut na pakita ko na. Instead of using the Debye-Yukel equation and the Debye-Yukel limiting law, we can use this table na lang. Okay? So Kieland published this paper uh, around 1937. Okay? So in this paper, may kita natin that for different ions, there is a corresponding gamma value at different ionic strength. So ibig sabihin nun, there is no more need to use the, uh, there is no more need to use the Debye-Yukel equation, okay? As long as andito yung ionic strength mo, as long as nandiyan yung ionic strength mo, kahit wag ka na gumamit ng Debye-Yukel uh, equation, makikita mo muna yung gamma value. Oh, tignan natin. Oh, for this problem, mu is 0 0.05. Ang gusto natin hanapin ay yung gamma ng H+. 
So, this is 0 0.05. Hanapin mo yung H plus dito. So, yung H plus siya yung ano, bungad na bungad. No? What is gamma? So, according to this day ball, at 0 0.05 molar, ionic strength, gamma is 0 0.86. Ano na-solve natin? 0 0.85. Di ba? Malapit. So, yun. Gamitin, na lang, gamitin mo na lang yun sa table. Okay? So, yun. Almost the same yung mga kuha mo. Although there is a small discrepancy, but it is acceptable to use this table na lang. Okay lang mag-round off dito. So, yun. Kanina, 0.85 using the, ano, di ba yung kaya ngayon, 0.86. Di ba? You save so much time. No? Instead na magpindot-pindot ka sa calcue, tignan mo na lang yung table. So, pakisave to, ha? Especially kapag mag-midterms na kayo. So, look, let's look at the other item. No? So, yung isa pang item natin is ito. 0.005 yung mu natin. Hanapin natin yung sa Na+. So, ito yung 0.005. Hanapin mo yung Na dito. Ah, ito. Ito yung Na. Bungad din siya. So, i-cross-reference mo lang siya dito sa table. We get the gamma equal to 0.928. Ano na-solve natin? 0.92. No, di ba? Malapit lang din. So, that means, no, kahit wag na kayo gumamit ng Debye-Yugel equation, okay lang. As long as your uh, ionic strengths are here. Basta nakalista sila dito. No, di ba? Laking ginhawa, no? So, nasagutan natin siya in less than 30 seconds. So, hopefully sa quiz, ganun din gawin nyo. Paunahan tumingin dito sa table. Okay. So, let's apply this ano, new concept. Find the activity coefficient of K plus. Oh, ito, typo ko to. Sorry for that. 0 0.05 molar KCL. Yan. <laughs> Last year ko pa yan, hindi na edit So, find the uh, K, uh, activity coefficient of K plus in 0 0.05 molar KCL. Ano yung sabi ko sa inyong technique? Pag 1 yung charge ng iyong cation, pati yung ion, mu is equal to the molarity na. Again, typo ko to. No? So, hindi ko pa rin siya na-edit. Uh, kaya, ayan. So, kapag 1 yung charge ng cation and the anion, kung ano yung molarity mo, yun na rin yung mu mo. Okay? So, shortcut yan. So, since your mu is 0 0.05, hanapin mo yung K plus sa uh, table. So, 0 0.05, ito yon, Hanapin ang K plus. Ah, ito. So, andito yung K plus. So, the gamma, the corresponding gamma for K plus at this ionic strength is 0 0.805. Yan, tapos ka na. So, gamma is equal to 0 0.805. Hmm, tapos na. Okay, so, tama yung kopya ko. Okay. So, ganun lang. Diba? Bilis. How about this one? Find the activity coefficient of calcium 2 plus in a solution of 3.3 millimolar calcium chloride. Okay. Oh. Ano yung millimolar, yung M tapos capital M? That is one one thousandth of a molar concentration. So that is just times 10 raised to negative 3 of your molarity. Okay? So alamin mo yung mu. Ito, hindi gagana yung technique ko dito kasi ito positive 2, ito negative 1. Yung kanilang charge. So I have to manually solve for the mu. So let's dissociate our salt. We will produce calcium 2 plus and chloride ions times 2. So what is the, ito millimolar, mamaya na natin i-convert to molarity. Ayan lang muna natin siya. So, so this is a concentration unit na. Huwag nyo muna pansinin yung millimolar. Isipin nyo molarity lang yan. Okay. So this is the, uh, dissociation equation for calcium chloride. So, since 1 is to 1 yung coefficient ng calcium and the salt, yun din yung magiging concentration niya. For chloride, 
Megan times 2 because of the coefficient. So that will become 6.6 .6 millimolar. So to solve for mu, that will be 1 half the concentration of calcium ion, the charge of the calcium ion square, plus the concentration of chloride ion times the charge of the chloride ion square. So that is one half. Mm. Concentration on calcium is 3.3 .3 millimolar times, oh, that's, you charge niya I2, so that's 2 square plus concentration on chloride, that is 6.6 .6 .6 millimolar times the charge, uh, negative 1 square. Ah, ito, calcu ko na, na. Ayoko na pahirapan sarili ko. Calcu. So, quote na. That's uh, 3.3 times 2 square plus 6.6 .6 times negative 1 squared. So, yeah, so what's mu? Mu is equal to 9.9 .9 millimolar. So, if, you, if you're going to convert that to molarity, you just divide this by 1,000. Because 1,000 millimolar is equal to 1 molar. So, that means mu is equal to 0. Point. Divide ko lang sa 1,000. That is 0 0.0099 molar. We can approximate this. Kasi pag 0.99, usually na approximate na namin yan for the ionic strength. This can be approximated as 0 0.01 molar. So this is the ionic strength natin, 0 0.01 molar. So what is the gamma for calcium pag 0 0.01 molar? Tingin tayo dito sa table. So, in table na to, naka-partition to. So, these are the positive 1 charge, positive 2 charge, positive 3, positive 4. O, dito tayo sa positive 2 charge. No? Hanapin yung calcium. Ito yon. Yun yung calcium yung binilugan ko doon. Ano kaya dito yung 0 0.01? <laughs> so, ito. Yung pang-apat na column. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, ito. So, yan yung 0 0.01 molar na uh, ionic strength. So, ano lang natin? So, this is calcium. This is 0 0.01 molar ionic strength. So, that is the gamma for calcium at that ionic strength. 0.675. Okay? So, gamma calcium is equal to 0 0.675. So as you can see, you can easily solve for gamma without the use of the Bayoukal equation as long as it is within the range of the table. As long as nasa pagitan siya ng 0 0.001 and 0 0.1. Anything beyond that, kailangan mo na gumamit ng ano, di Bayoukal. Okay? That is 0 0.5. No, gamit ka na ng di Bayoukal doon. 0 0.4. Gamit ka na di Bayoukal. Okay? Pero as long as your values are within this range, no, 0 0.001 and 0 0.1, pwede mo magamit yung table na to. Oh, ito, question dyan. Uh, sir, pwede kaya? Wala, eh, 0 0.25. I mean, 0 0.025. Pwede ko ba yung gamitin dito? Oh, Kung nari, may mu is equal to 0 0.025, pwede ko gamitin yung table na to. Kasi sabi mo, Basta within sa range na to, pwede. Ang sagot doon ay yes, pwede. Kunwari, you have a mu that is in between any numbers here. Kunwari, between dito, between dito, between dito, between dito. You can use the linear interpolation. Okay? So, kunwari, ito yung hinahanap mong mu. Asan siya in between? So, andito, in between siya dito, pati dito. So, somewhere here. 
So we can do linear interpolation. So ipapakita ko how to do linear interpolation para hindi na kayo mag debayukel. Pwede naman kasi mag debayukel. Ayoko lang gawin niyo siya masyado pa. Gawin niyo siya parate no? kasi kawawa kayo. Uh, baka pagod na pagod na kayo mag-solve niya. Uh, so for example, ito ngayon problem natin. So if our mu is 0.025, what is H plus using the table? So we can do linear interpolation for the gamma value. Ito yung equation. Mamaya, pakita ko kung ano meaning nito. So ang gagawin mo, anamin mo kung si, saan siya nakasandwich. Saan nakasandwich itong mu na to? So yung 0.025, that is sandwich between these values, itong 0 0.1 and 0. Uh, 0 0.01 and the 0 0.05. So the 0 0.025 is in between these two ranges. So ano gagawin ko? Kukunin ko yung gamma ng H plus at 0 0.01 and yung gamma ng H plus at 0 0.05. Kukunin ko yon. Gagawa akong table. So, I will list my gamma here and my corresponding mu. So, you you rank them from lowest to highest. No? Highest mu to lowest mu. So, unahin ko yung highest mu, 0 0.05, followed by the unknown, 0 0.025, and then yung 0 0.01. At 0 0.05, mu is equal to 0.86. So, sulat ko yung 0.86. And at 0 0.01, mu is 0.914. Ang tanong natin, ano to? Ano yun? Ano yung gamma kapag 0.025? So, ganito gagamitin mo. You do the linear interpolation. So, let me discuss kung paano gamitin tong equation. So, for a known y-interval, that means yung first row mo, isusubtract mo with the second row. So, that's the unknown y-interval. Yung naka-blue. So, you subtract this with this. No? Yun yung unknown gamma interval mo. What is delta y? When you say delta y, iyon yung highest and lowest. No? Okay, so from the first row to the third row. So this minus this. First row minus the last row. Yun yung delta y, gamma. How about the known mu interval? So for the known mu interval, so ito lang yun. So kung ano yung gap mo dito, yun din dito. And for delta mu, ito, isang buko ulit. No? So, yan, so color coded tayo again. For delta gamma, that's the first row minus the last row. For the delta mu, that's the first row minus the last row. For the unknown gamma interval, that's the first row minus the second row. For known mu, that's the first row minus the second row. Uh, plug in mo yung equation. Uh, known gamma interval, 0 0.86 minus gamma. Delta y, uh, delta gamma, this minus this. About this one, a uh, known mu interval, ito yung red, no? So, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.025. How about yung delta mu? So, first row minus the last row. So, now you can solve for mu using shift solve. Ako, okay, yung shift solve ko na. Ayoko na mag-algebra. Nakatamad na eh. So, I will use shift solve to solve for the gamma. So, shift solve nyo na lang kung kaya ng calcul nyo. Hopefully, makapag-invest kay sa calculator na may ship sold para madali ang buhay. No. Ship sold, gamma is equal to 
So that's it. No, so yeah. So that's the value of gamma when mu is zero point zero two five. Oh, diba? Wag na kayo magdibayu kaya kapag between naman sa range ng mu. Pero kapag lagpas na sa range ng mu, dun kayo magdibayu kaya, ha? Okay. So yeah. Pag trinay nyo, i-debay to your answer will be, ano, will be around this value then So, safe gamitin tong linear interpolation. Okay, so that is our session for today, no? Ang dami natin discuss na. Hopefully, uh, okay lang naman kung uh, until now may mga questions kayo in mind, no? So, ako kasi, to be honest with you, no, natutunan ko to noong Yung as, in, yung as in na digest ko sa, talaga siya noong bago na ako graduate. <laughs> okay. hindi, hindi kasi na-discuss to sa amin sa anak eh. Mas pagdating sa physical chemistry namin, biglang diniscuss to. So, kakapakapapa ako nun. Pero before I graduate, na, na gets ko na siya. Okay. So, it will take time no to absorb the idea. Pero yun nga, ang lucky sa inyo is Kasi during my time nung ako nag-aaral nito, wala talagang video nito sa YouTube. Uh, as in, eh, kaya ginawa ako last year, ako na yung gumawa. So if you check the YouTube, yun, isa ako sa mga tatlo o apat lang na nag-upload ng topic about this. No? Ayan, kaya until now, active pa rin yung video na yun. So yun, you can use this video material para magre-review. Para magreview review kayo. Okay? So yun. So ayan, uh, ulit-ulitin niyo lang if in case na ano, may doubts, no. Pero in calculation that's tolerable naman. Okay. So you already you were able nga to do antilogs, no. So I mean kayang-kaya niyo rin tong linear interpolation. Just follow the pattern. So for unknown, that's first minus second, for delta that's first minus the last, no. So ayan. So okay lang kahit ano, medyo may delay tayo sa info ngayon kasi na-absorb nyo pa. Pero later on, masusundan nyo rin yan. No? Uh, chemistry is more on about ano lang, retention ng knowledge. No? Ulit-ulitin nyo lang talaga yung uh, ideas, yung lesson. Okay? So, yan. So, we were able to cover five topics today. Daming nangyari, no? And for next week, I will do an asynchronous discussion. So I will upload the video in which it is described ko doon yung application ng problem na to with equilibrium problems. Okay. Papakita ko yung ano explain uh, yung way na talaga sa pag-solve na. So I have some problems here. Uh, ako na yung magsasagot nito. So, I will compare the solubility of KSP in water and in, ano, in diverse ion solution. The concentration of calcium in sodium fluoride with and without the activity. And then, yung kay acid no, in pure water and in a diverse ion solution. So, may kita nyo magbabago yung mga concentration nila. No. Okay, so yun. So you can actually practice na, no? Y alam nyo naman kung paano yung K, no? That's K prime equals KSP times the gamma gamma. Okay, so you can try to solve these questions. Marunong na naman kayo mag-solve ng ionic, uh, ionic coefficients, uh, activity coefficients. So yun. So try nyo na, no? So by next week, I, I will upload the video. So di tayo makikita next week. Kailan tayo magkikita? Most likely sa consultation week na lang. No? Kasi midterm exam na rin next, next week. Okay, so I hope na you will use the time na hindi tayo magkikita to review. Okay, so I, I will upload more materials for you to review sa susunod na lingga. Okay, so I'll see you again next time. So stay safe and ingat na. So... A copy of the recording will be uploaded on YouTube for your reference, especially kapag magre-review kayo, ha? Okay, so that's all for today.
Uh, I'll see you again next time. Thank you, Paul, sir. Okay, thank, thank you.